to the last AI insight for this year. Happy Christmas in advance to everybody and thanks for watching. This is our weekly show in which we have a look at all the movers, shakers and things that interest us in the world of AI. So let's jump straight in. Ho ho ho. So OpenAI have finally released Sora, the much touted, much expected video content creation tool uh, from OpenAI. Basically, this works like a lot of other video content creation tools. You type in a prompt, you generate six or so seconds of video. It's currently not available in every territory, but you can see here the quality of the results are pretty good here, uh, whether that's in inanimate objects. Very good here with things like hair and so on, which can sometimes be a bit of a giveaway um, for video content creation via AI. And then also, if you look at what it's doing in terms of faces, I was quite impressed by the quality of the faces, the eyes, and the detail, because eyes can sometimes be a little bit of a giveaway with AI-created content. So secondly this week, uh, Nature in its online version has a very interesting article. This is actually based on some previous research by Epoch AI, but I think it's quite indicative of a lot of the trends that are happening now in the world of, of AI. So what they're basically reporting is that according to the research, uh, large language models could run out of things to be trained on by 2028. So this is a variety of causes behind this, part of which is the challenges of scaling because of the power energy that we've, we've reported on before, but also because of the fact that by then, large language models will have been trained on all of the trillions of tokens that are available on the internet. AI will have effectively eaten the internet. Additionally, there's the challenge of the quality of some of that information. You want to kind of weed out pornography, you want to weed out various different things that you don't want to include in the training. So this gets you to a scale where can you then scale and increase large language models beyond that? And the article talks about a number of different things. It talks about the fact that you could then train it on uh, more private information, such as WhatsApp messages and utilizing, for example, the data from headsets uh, such as the MetaQuest and so on, to be able to train it in there. But clearly that's problematic. Another challenge that the LLM providers have at the moment is more and more organizations are taking court action to try to prove copyright infringement. A lot more sites are trying to crack down and prevent automated scraping of their web data in order to be ingested. And a variety of these things create this kind of unique problem. However, the solution I think is quite interesting in the context of what we're seeing elsewhere within, within the um, LLM world, which is that you know, workarounds include either using very specific information to train smaller models for very specific tasks, which is definitely something we're seeing with agents being created, flows of agents and so on that we reported on last time. Also, the ability to be able to create synthetic data from other LLMs. So to be able to train a, an LLM on the basis of information that comes from synthetic data created by another LLM. We'll see in a moment how Amazon are promulgating this as well, but it's quite an interesting concept and obviously has its own challenges if the synthetic data isn't of the quality of the original data. Very well worth a read that particular article. So AWS had their Invent event recently in which they announced all of the new features that they have coming on and available for the next year. There's a slew of them regarding Bedrock, which is their AI tool set. A uh, couple of things that are really interesting here. They've now introduced the ability to be able to have what they call distillation, which is the ability to generate synthetic data from a large language model in order to train a secondary model. Again, something that we referred to just now in the nature uh, piece. Also, they have the ability to create fine tuning tasks. So instead of having to fine tune a model in your own environment, you can now fine tune a model using Bedrock. Uh, and it will go away, run the tool, scale as much as you need it to, and then give you a fine trained model. I did notice that you have to use provisioned output rather than kind of pay as you go in order to use the model, but certainly something that's very useful in terms of making these sort of features accessible to more and more people. The other big announcement was that they've announced uh, the Nova suite of models, a whole range of new models at a lower price point in order to make these sorts of things accessible to more and more people. So they have the image creation model by typing in a prompt, just as you would expect with an awful lot of these things, uh, even quite a complicated prompt. You're able then to generate uh, an image or a set of images. You can specify the size that you want to put them in, the aspect ratio, a kind of broad color palette, a conditioning image or a training image to use, the number of sample images you want to you want to be able to create in there that will then run off and it will create for you uh, a set of images uh, that you can pick and like the one that you uh, like best from 
Now, what's quite interesting about this is that in addition to actually just creating the images, you've then got a sequence of actions you can perform on this image subsequently to it being created. Uh, and these are sorts of features that you're starting to see in Google Photos and lots of other tools, but it's quite interesting they're putting them right here in the generation piece um, and, and also callable by uh, API. So here, for example, I'm selecting my top image that I like best. So here I'm going to remove the tram in the background. I can do that by either an image square or by a description. I could, I could have added another prompt here. And you can see here it's removed it, replaced it with something that I probably don't want in there. So I have another option here, which is to apply another effect, which is simply to remove the background. It does what it says on the tin. Nova also has text models for traditional text models of various different sizes. Uh, it, it, there is also another, another model that's associated with this, which is Nova Real. So if we give Nova Real a complicated, uh, which is for video generation effectively, if we give Nova Real a complicated um, output, it will then generate a video. It takes about five minutes, puts it into an S3 bucket for you when it's done. And then we can take a look at the result. Now, interestingly, as you'll see from this, when I ran it through Runway, versus uh, the Nova model. The results were definitely better, though far from perfect, uh, using the same prompt in Runway. But given that it's only been out for a week, it's interesting, it'll be interesting to see how this develops. But the image model and the text model uh, are really, really good at being able to create content, which was highly impressive a good price. So Patchwork is Midjourney's new way of creating a world in which you can explore and collaborate. So these Miro style boards can be done either individually or shared with other people. Uh, you can then create characters, events, places, etc. And start to type your prompts just as you would normally in Midjourney. This will then create either a character or a place or so on and, and uh, allow you to build up your world or your story or your narrative or your shared environment. Um, and you can link different pieces together, and then you can do what they call painting, which basically allows you to take your prompt and it will do the standard mid-journey effect of being able to create the images, which it will run off and do and paint effectively, which is just a new terminology, I think, for creating the images that we've got there. You can then select one or more of them that you really like. Um, and, you know, I think this is an early stages tool. There are certainly things that could be improved, but it's quite, it's quite cool some of the things it can do. You can link different scraps, as they call them, together um, so that you can create, again, something that's kind of like a shared, shared narrative. You can also allow it to generate further prompts based on your existing prompt. So they have this feature here, which is, um, which is the ability to tell me more, which will then go off and will actually generate a, another prompt for you based on the existing content that you've got, or the existing image that you've got, which will then from there, subsequently, you can then paint again and create more content from that. Like I say, this is uh, early doors. This is this is, um, but it is again nice space to be able for creative people to be able to build mood boards, build, build stories, brainstorm ideas, and so on. And it will be very interesting to see where this goes at the moment. In order to use this at the moment, you have to have a Google login to be able to do it. Um, but it's super easy to use and something that uh, is definitely worth watching. And finally, Zoom have rebranded themselves as Zoom Communications, and they are now an AI-first organization. Now, this has been a move that's been going on for a little while, and you've seen in some of the products that they've released to support the video conferencing that there has been a move towards utilizing more and more of their AI companion. Uh, but now they're going all in effectively on this. Interestingly, in the blogs on the website, they talk a lot about the federated approach to AI and drawing contrast between the similar tools that they have for minutes of meetings and next steps or, or action points coming out of meetings. They compare it to Google using Gemini, Microsoft using ChatGPT. They have some statistics which say that they are 20% more accurate in terms of creating next steps than, than uh, their rivals but their approach is much more federated. So taking a group of large language models, federating those out to do specific tasks and bringing those back using a combination of open source and closed source large language models. It's an interesting approach. It certainly seems to be one that's happening more and more in the industry, but well worth looking out for. So Zoom Communications, now an AI first company. And that's it for this week. That's it for this year. We'd like to thank you all for listening and we'll see you in the new year. Happy Christmas. Happy